So the radio itself, it's, as I said, a 2.4 gigahertz radio. It works with uh, one megabit per second GFSK, so it's one mega symbol per second, two bits per symbol. We use a slightly larger modulation index than we do with classic Bluetooth. So classic Bluetooth has a modulation index of somewhere around 0.35. With low energy, we've widened the modulation index to 0.5. So if it was purely 0.5, it would be GMSK, or median shift keying. But we call it still GFSK because the modulation index could be somewhere between 0.45 and 0.55. Because if, if we make it exactly 0.5, that means the cost goes up. If we make it sort of somewhere between 0.45 and 0.55, then we can keep the cost low. And we need to get the cost low so we can make sure that we can sell billions and billions of these things. And we split the ISM band into 40 channels. And we do that by having a 2 megahertz channel spacing. So the first channel is at 2.4. 02 megahertz, the last channel is at 2480 megahertz. And what we've done is we've defined two basic types of channels. So we've got an advertising channel and we've got a data channel. So we've got three advertising channels that are strategically placed around the band. So we've got one right at the bottom end, one right at the top end, and one sort of somewhere in the middle. But it's not just arbitrarily somewhere in the middle. It's strategically between Wi-Fi channel 1 and Wi-Fi channel 6. Because when you look at infrastructure networks in, say, a corporate campus, they will have their Wi-Fi access points on channel 1, channel 6, or channel 11. And they will basically space them around using that. So you'll have a channel 1 next to a channel 6 and a channel 11, and then you'll have a channel 11 next to a channel 6 and a channel 1, and a channel 1 next to a channel 6, and channel, et cetera, et cetera. So we strategically place the advertising channels such that Wi-Fi doesn't interfere with Bluetooth low energy advertising and Bluetooth low energy advertising doesn't interfere with Wi-Fi. So the link layer is brand new. It's brand new to low energy. Uh, we basically looked at the basic rate baseband and link manager and said, yeah, there's a few things in here we like, but let's start again because we want to make it even lower power. So we have one packet format. Compare that with basic rate that has about 17 different packet formats. We only have two protocol data unit types. So we have the advertising data that is sent on advertising channels, and we have data channels that are sent on the data channels. We have seven advertising PDUs. Um, so we have, for example, non-connectable advertising, connectable advertising, directed advertising, uh, scan request, scan response, connect request, and there's one other which I can't remember now. And then we've kept some of the useful features from uh, basic rate. So adaptive frequency hopping works fantastically in basic rate to remove interferers from Bluetooth and remove Bluetooth away from interferers. So we've kept adaptive frequency hopping. We've got a very low power acknowledgement scheme. So in classic Bluetooth, there's a sequence number, one bit sequence number, which alternates for each new packet. And then there's an ACK bit that says, yes, I received the last packet, or no, I did not receive the last packet. What we've done with low energy is change that ACK bit to a next expected sequence number, which means that we don't have to acknowledge that packet immediately after we receive the previous packet. That means that we can have a master, for example, transmit a packet to the slave, and the slave can go, yeah, I actually don't fancy replying to that because I want to save some power. And then two seconds later, acknowledge that packet. It is incredibly low power. And we also have very, very fast connections. So let's look at some of the details here. So for advertising, what happens is we advertise on all three advertising channels in sequence very, very quickly. So if you're advertising once a second, you would advertise on the first advertising channel, the second advertising channel, the third advertising channel, then you go to sleep. Then you wake back up and you do the first channel, the second channel, the third channel, then you go to sleep, then you wake back up. First channel, second channel, third channel. So as you can see in the diagram here, we've got these advertising channels packets going out. Sometimes you'll get a scan request in response to your advertising packet. So if you are discoverable, Ah, that's the other advertising packet. It's the advertising discoverable indication. 
So if you're a discoverable advertiser, then you can get a scan request to you, which is basically a request for a little bit more information. So for example, if you're advertising the current temperature and the fact that uh, you know, your, your name is temp, then the scan response data could include the fact that you support the temperature uh, profile and uh, you know, a whole bunch of other services. So the reason for advertising is, is very simple. We can advertise promiscuously, so we can just advertise stuff. We can actually transmit signed data in these packets. We can advertise the presence of the device to the area. So if you remember the talk this morning, he was talking about, you know, I'm just walking to the supermarket and the supermarket knows I'm there because I've got some device on me that is periodically advertising the fact that it's me. Well, this is how you do it. Bluetooth early advertising. And also to enable you to reconnect. In terms of the link layer, the link layer, as I said, has got a uh, very simple state machine. There's actually only four main states. There's a fifth state called the standby state, which is the one in the middle. But there's four main states. So there's the scanning state, the advertising state, the initiating state, the advertising state, which is obviously up in the top right. And then if you're advertising and another guy is initiating, you send a connect request, then you both go into the connected state. And the only way out of the connected state is back to the standby state. So it's a very, very simple state machine. So let, let's look how this works. So in the peripheral, the peripheral goes from the standby state to the advertising state. In the central, the central will start in the standby state, move to the scanning state to see what devices are around, and when it finds a device of interest, moves back to the standby state, then moves to the initiating state to initiate a connection to one of those devices that is advertising. When the initiator picks up the advertising packet, it sends a connect request packet back, a single packet, and at that point, they are both in the connection. What is important about this, though, is that the central device becomes the master of the connection, and the peripheral always becomes the slave of the connection. So the topology is determined by which device advertises and which device scans. So in terms of data transmissions, it's very simple. So on the left, we've got the advertising indication followed by the connect request, and that's done on one of the advertising channels. So here we've chosen channel 37. And then the master comes along and sends a packet to the slave. And then the slave, 150 microseconds later, can respond with its data. And that continues ping pong style until both devices decide that, hey, I've had enough of this. And then they go to sleep and then they wake up some period later and do the whole transaction again. So once a connection is, is made, the master informs the slave of the hopping sequence and when to wake. So there's an interval on how frequently these devices synchronize with each other. So for example, for a keyboard, it might be every 10 milliseconds. For a heart rate belt, it might be every 250 milliseconds. For a proximity tag, it might be once a second. So depending upon what those devices do and what use case they're trying to do, that period will change. All subsequent transactions are performed in one of the data channels. So we do a single one of these master-slave, master-slave, master-slave transactions in a single data channel. So every time we go to sleep and wake up, we go to a new data channel. And that uh, new data channel is adaptively frequency hopped. All these transactions can be encrypted with both uh, AES encryption and a CCM uh, MIC on the end of that packet to ensure authenticity of the data and who sent that. And both devices can go into a deep sleep mode between those transactions. So there is a sleep clock accuracy that you communicate as part of the uh, connection request. And that sleep clock accuracy says, how accurate is my clock? And if my clock is, say, 150 ppm clock, then the other device can make allowances of how early or late it needs to wake up to be able to resynchronize. And of course, it, will, it can itself have its own sleep clock accuracy. And the minimum or the maximum sleep clock accuracy you can have in low energy is 500 ppm. So if both devices do 500 ppm, you've got 1,000 ppm sleep clock accuracy. 
you can implement in CMOS a 250 ppm free running oscillator without a problem. So, you know, if you need 500 ppm, you know, good luck. <laughs> <laughs>